now, Fox 13 meteorologist Valerie Mills with your Sky Tower radar forecast. Hey everyone, and good Sunday morning. We're starting out with a live look in downtown Tampa where it sure is sunny out there to start the day. Just a few high base clouds, but otherwise really nice out there. Comfortably mild, 74 degrees. So for this time of year, it is warm, seasonally speaking, but at least we have a nice day to get out and enjoy. We Breezes are going to be pretty light, mostly in that five to 10 mile per hour range, coming in mostly out of the east with some of that flow coming in out of the southeast. We take a look at the big picture here. And we're still tracking Raphael in the Gulf. We've seen a little bit of shower activity kind of on the northern side of the system, so parts of Louisiana. But otherwise, this storm really has not been a big impact after making landfall in Cuba. It got into the Gulf and has just kind of been meandering here, but quickly weakening as it has done so. And so you can even see here as we play this back, we did see some of the kind of outer rain bands impacting the Gulf Coast. But otherwise, the wind field with the storm even mostly staying over the open water. And so the big picture here, we've already seen this weaken from this time yesterday. Winds now down to 40 miles per hour. And so it's just at the last lifespan of being a tropical storm. It is still kind of moving to the west northwest crawling at two miles per hour. And so two high pressure systems on each side of the system has really been guiding it. And we start to watch a little bit of a change in the steering flow. And as it gets weaker, it's gonna start to dive south. And so by Tuesday, likely going to be no longer tropical storm Raphael as the winds will be down to about 30 miles per hour. And other than that, there's one other area that we are watching for additional development. Invest 98L, that is the area that we can see here, just kind of to the east of the Bahamas where we have this yellow polygon. There's the potential for development, but notice the odds only 10% over the next two days and 10% over the next seven. So not looking very likely that we'll see something out of this, but we will continue to watch it here as high pressure sitting over the coast for us kind of starts to slide east and then we'll watch another high pressure kind of kind of, kind of sitting over the Yucatan start to build in and then slide over for us. So we're going to have a brief cold front swing across the area later this week, then high pressure building right back in across the southeast. And so for us, really, we're going to continue on this warmer and mainly rain free pattern with what looks like just a break in the warmth as temperatures will be back down to seasonal. And we're looking ahead to kind of this upcoming Friday and next Saturday for a brief break in the above average temperatures. And you can see how much of the East Coast is feeling the influence of that high pressure for our Veterans Day. Look at that. New York going to be 15 above average for us, about seven degrees above average for our Monday plans. And so from there, Maybe that system that I just showed you down in the Caribbean tries to kick back a little bit more moisture. You can see that on the southern edge of the peninsula, but then this cold front starts to move through and this drier air starts to kind of win out from the north side of that. So humidity levels are going to drop as well about a week from now. That's going to be feeling pretty nice. And we're only looking at highs kind of down to about the 80 degree mark. So a big difference from today where we'll top out around 88 in Tampa. Temperature wise, we're talking 85 to up to 88 all across the greater Tampa Bay area. Lows tonight, they're going to be down to the low 70s for the Bay Area and upper 60s inland and up to the Nature Coast, some mid 60s for you there. There's a look at your highs for your Veterans Day plans. Another round, mid to upper 80s, very similar to where highs are today, but nice on the water if you are heading out today or tomorrow. 10 to 15 knot winds, seas around two, three, two to three feet with a moderate chop on the Bay. And there you can see that cool down at the end of the week, lows down to the mid 60s even, so that will be feeling pretty nice. Hi, everyone. I'm Meteorologist Valerie Mills. Thanks for logging on to my Fox Hurricane. Still tracking Tropical Storm Raphael, but Raphael is rapidly weakening. And even as we look at our enhanced satellite over the last six hours, it's quickly losing that look. It's encountering all of these hostile winds that are here in the northern Gulf, and that drier air has continued to feed into this system. So here's what's left of it now 40 mile per hour winds. And so this is not going to be a tropical storm for much longer. It's very slowly crossing. The steering winds with the system has, have kind of collapsed. And so it's really just been meandering around the Gulf for the last couple of days, moving at about three miles per hour to the north northwest right now. But it is going to kind of start to take a dive to the south. And as it does so, continues to weaken even more. So by Monday and into Tuesday, we're likely dealing with post tropical storm Raphael. You see those winds down to 30 miles per hour. And so the remnants of this will kind of continue to drift south through the Gulf, but it actually doesn't look like 
likely that this is going to make landfall anywhere, which we originally were thinking that it would once it made landfall in Cuba and got into the Gulf, but it just was not able to do that in enough time before all of those environmental factors started to weaken it. So here's the big picture. Still some of those kind of areas of rain will be possible on the north side of the storm. We've got a front moving across these areas that'll help kind of enhance some areas of rain right around Louisiana, it looks like. But then we get on into our Monday, things starting to wind down, and then it really kind of collapses in and loses itself by the um, end of Monday into Tuesday, looking most likely. And so other than Raphael, the other area that we're watching just east of the Bahamas, Invest 98L, very low development odds with this system. But it's something that we will continue to watch. Here's kind of the big picture with this. This is the general area that we're watching. And so maybe we just talk about some rain to be possible for parts of the Bahamas, U.S. Virgin Islands, maybe parts of South Florida. But this is kind of the area that we're watching for a potential low pressure system to form. And you can kind of see that trying to do its thing Sunday and Monday. And then it kind of gets caught up, it looks like, in the flow as we got kind of a couple of fronts moving across the area, high pressure off the coast. And so we kind of see the circulation just get lost. And so at this point, a lot of our models not picking up on too much. We can see this general area of rain here on our Fox model. But as I put this in play, look what happens. Don't really see a low pressure system form. Maybe some rain down to parts of Puerto Rico, the Haiti area, Dominican Republic, maybe parts of Cuba see some showers. But otherwise, it doesn't look like too much is going to make it to our area as this kind of will just fizzle out. So we'll continue to watch Invest 98L for any additional development. But with those 10% odds on the two day outlook and the seven outlook not looking too favorable that we see something spin up. Sarah is the next name in line and today officially marks the three week countdown. We are 21 days out from the end of this hurricane season. We'll have more updates to come right here on my Fox hurricane.